What's up, y'all? Welcome back. As promised, here's the acoustic lesson for Jump Around a Line by Earl Burnside. Now, this is really one of the most famous and most well-known Hill Country Blues songs of all time. Let's watch him play it first so you know exactly how it's supposed to sound. And then after that, I'm gonna teach you how you can practice it to get it sounding the best that you possibly can. When we do that, we're gonna use my build method to learn how to play the song. Because if you just follow the notes of the tab, it's not gonna sound right. It's Music like this, it's not just about the notes. It's way more about how you're playing it, how you're approaching it. But first, let's just watch him play it together so that we know exactly how he makes it sound. Let's check it out. Jump along, hang it out on the line. Yeah. Now this is the main riff. See my jump along, hang it out on the line. One thing, one thing I really love about his playing is he always just looks like he's having so much fun even more so than a lot of the other artists that I like. He really just makes it seem like he's really enjoying himself when he's playing music. He's always smiling like that. And I, it kind of makes me really happy too. So that's one thing I just wanted to mention first, but there's a few things I want you guys to concentrate on. One is something that we're calling the scratch. That sound like this. And the thing I want you to concentrate on is how he's varying the scratch. Sometimes it's fully scratch, meaning there's no kind of pitch to it at all. Maybe you can just kind of hear a little bit of a harmonic there, okay? And then sometimes you'll hear kind of like this, oh, just a little bit more. That's all being controlled with the left hand. The second thing I want you to concentrate on is this bass line that's going on underneath it. He's putting those two things together to make this really kind of percussive, danceable groove. And he actually uses this pattern in a few songs almost exactly the same. He has different words that he sings to it, but the pattern itself and the mechanics are exactly the same. So when we're listening, listen for those two variations. The variation on the scratch versus that's full scratch and then sometimes, sometimes he lets a little bit of the note come in. And then the bass line. Let's check it out. Nobody had something on my mind. <laughs> Big scratch there, right? A lot of notes coming in on the scratch. I would know your baby. Now when he sings, notice it takes a lot less of the scratch. It's mostly just percussive. the baseline sometimes the baseline has some small variations too we'll talk about that when we get into the lesson part too way down here where you want to do Thing about the form that he's doing. This is kind of like a, a type of form where he's really just feeling it. He's not counting the number of bars in between his verse phrases, meaning when he sings a phrase, he'll, he's just going to play. A number of times until he thinks it's cool to start going again. Okay, another thing to keep in mind is how he's using his thumb to do that scratch bit. And the reason I'm using a thumb pick, and y'all do not have to use a thumb pick, but the reason I'm using it is to kind of help save my thumb. When you do these big scratches with a lot of energy, if you don't have the thumb pick on there, it really tears up your thumb. And I've, I go over that in a lot of detail in my other lessons, so I'm not gonna talk about that very much in this lesson. At the end, I'm gonna give you an option to where you don't have to use your thumb to do the scratch part, you can actually use the backs of your nails. He does use this index finger for scratch for other songs, but in this one, he's always using his thumb in the electric and the acoustic version. Let's keep watching. Oh, 
Oh, baby, Lord, let me go to bed. <laughs> Big smile. He's having a great time. I like that. Fix my supper. Scratch here, right? More notes in the scratch. Hear that B string ringing out. This white lightning don't go on to my head. Another thing you might notice is his hand position. He holds his hand up really high. He does that in all of his playing. That's part of his style. He gets a little bit of the sound, but you don't have to hold your hand. There. That was, we're gonna back this up. That is what we're calling the lead break part. He plays this as an intro and sometimes in the middle of the song to kind of break away from this part. And, and there's kind of a weird rhythm to it. It's not really a weird rhythm, but it's a, he adds like an extra couple beats to a, one of the measures. And we'll talk about that again later in the lesson. Let's keep watching till the end. That's the first break phrase that he plays. He plays the second variation coming up here, I think. This is the second variation. Yeah. Fix my supper, baby, long, let me go to bed. go to bed This white lightning done gone to my head Notice but lots of scratch there he's varying that all the time Nice. So now let's jump into the build method and how I recommend for y'all to learn this main phrase. Like I said before, there's going to be two ways that we can do it, but I'm just going to show you the way, the way that he's playing it first, and then I'll show you the variation afterwards. So just to give you an overview of what the build method is, it's a different method of learning. Instead of what most people do when they get a new song is they look at the full tab and then they try to piece together all the notes like that, right? But it's impossible to get all the notes with rhythm when you're first learning it. So what the build method does instead is it starts with rhythm because this is a rhythmic song. This is a percussive song. If, you, if you're not starting with the rhythm, it's not something that you can just add after you know all the notes because then your mechanics have changed and things like that. We're starting with the correct mechanic on how you move your body. Then we're gonna add in the notes that you need to get it to sound right. The whole main phrase is really just two measures long. And remember, he does subtle variations of it on how much he varies the scratch, but this is what he's playing as the main phrase the whole time. Sounds like this. That's the main phrase, and that's what we're building up to. So I think we have eight steps here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps here. And follow along with these tabs. If you join FJA members, you can download these tabs so you can follow along more easily. But the first step is just gonna be doing this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. So the first step is just getting the boom and the chuck. Again, I'm using a thumb pick because doing these big chucks like this with your thumb, meaning like hitting this string plus the top four strings with some attitude, really kind of tears apart your thumb. Some of you will be able to handle it. I recommend just go for it until your thumb hurts. Maybe then you can explore using a thumb pick. But as you can see in the video, he doesn't use a thumb pick. He's just developed a really strong callus on his thumb where it doesn't hurt his hand anymore. So the first step is this. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four. Here I'm making the second part short. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. With the left hand, muting after the notes play. That's step one. Now step two is the same thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But here you're gonna experiment with different amounts of scratch. Okay, so what I mean by that is try to start adjusting your hand where you can get a sound kind of like this. Okay, and how I'm doing that is this note's coming in and then these top three strings are mostly all muted. What you'll see is if you just kind of relax your hand here and have flat fingers instead of curved fingers like you might have been trying to play with before, you gotta flatten your fingers out and it kind of just naturally will mute these strings, okay? And I want y'all to vary how much of the notes come in, okay? It's about how much pressure you're putting down on these strings. When he's playing, you'll notice a lot of times just kind of the B string comes in. Kind of like that. So that's step two, is vary the scratch. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now for the rest of these steps, let's put a metronome on, because like I said, the build method really functions as a rhythmic tool. It's practicing things in rhythm. If you're not playing it rhythmically, then the build method won't work for you. It's just the same as just slowly going through the notes and tab. Now this is the speed of the original about. This is at 186. So we're going to slow this way down to about half. Let's put it back down to about 90. So now we're playing all beats. We're going to play like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Big scratch here. Three, four. But now we're alternating the bass. Notice my left hand. My left hand is alternating between the second fret of the D string to the second fret of the A string. And I'm just doing that with a little roll here. You notice that he does that same kind of technique. Often he actually uses his first finger sometimes too. Okay, so that's step three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Still trying to have a short, scratch as opposed to it's not that right it's this okay. step four is a little tricky because now we're adding this the upstroke of the index finger on the open D string on the and of two here we go at 90 BPM two three four one two and three four one You might have noticed that he plays with his index finger kind of in front of his thumb. And he gets away with it because he's great. However, if you're one of my students, I don't recommend that. That's not really a great versatile technique. For fingerstyle playing, it's best to actually have your fingers underneath the thumb. So when you pluck, the finger will go, have free room to go this way. Now step five, you notice has a bigger first beat. We're doing a octave. And how are we doing that octave? Well, we are muting the A string here with our middle finger, the note that's pressing the second fret of the D string. If you just use the edge of that finger, and remember it's flat, not on the tip, but very flat, that'll mute the A string nicely. And then when you go through, literally the only two strings that are coming out are this string and this string. Everything else is muted, remember, with the other fingers. So this is what now step five is. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. With the metronome. One, two, three, four. Couple more. So 
you can see it's a lot of left hand muting, right? If you get the left hand muting going, everything else kind of works itself out. The next step is the second measure, the hammer on on beat four. So that's what he does. Okay, notice he's hammering on, open to two, but still muting most of the strings. It's not just, it's this. Adding you know, some of those strings, but and also sometimes just a click. Remember, he's varying that, okay? So the second phrase by itself goes like this. One, two, and three, hammer on. One, two, and three, hammer on. Metronome. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, hammer on. One, two, and three, hammer on. Now for step seven and eight, we're gonna fill in some of the syncopation in measures one and measures two. And remember, all the downbeats are done with the thumb. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Syncopation comes when you start adding in ands in between those downbeats. So like this, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. How we're doing that is with the index finger, always just plucking the open D string in between those phrases. So step seven sounds like this. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, with the metronome. Step seven, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. And then finally, step eight is we're gonna add another one of those syncopated phrases on the and of four. So this time it's actually gonna be on the second fret of the D string. Very slowly like this. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. With the metronome. One, two, three, four. Finally now, putting everything together for the full two measure phrase. So remember, in the second phrase now, we're doing the hammer on. So the whole two measure phrase slowly is like this. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, hammer on. With a metronome. Two, three, four. Remember, there's a couple other phrases in here that uh, lead break phrase that we discussed from the beginning. And that sounds like this. Notice we have four full measures of 4-4, four, four, meaning we're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And then we have, and then one half measure going and then that starts the phrase over. So that's just gonna be an extra two beats. The way that I personally remember it is after you do the little lead break, after you have this, sometimes he actually holds that note for a little longer and then he does click, click, click. So just three clicks and then, and then the phrase. So we go, click, click, click. There's also a second phrase that he plays in the same way. It ends with that click, click, click. Okay, and here's that phrase.
Now on those bending notes, those are really hard to play. So often when I'll play it, I'll just play little slides on this, especially on this second fret. To save your fingers a little bit from having having to do that bend there, which is really difficult in that second position. There's an ending tag he also adds there. It sounds like this. Okay. Now he plays that rubato, which means freely with no real time. He's slowing it down and sometimes he plays it fast, but just follow those notes in the tab. And that's how he ends it. Now lastly, I wanted to show you another way to kind of do this. And you'll see a lot of players play this way. In fact, often when I'm playing this song, I'll play it this way as well. And that's using a backhand part instead of the thumb. You're raking your fingers out to do the scratch bit. So that would sound like this. <laughs> and notice what we're doing there. If I slow that down and you just kind of look at my right hand, it's the same thing. We're just hitting. So notice we're still trying to do a lot of the muting. The only difference here is that when you do it this way, if, if you don't have a huge callus in your thumb that feels like a thumb pick, then these notes aren't gonna be as bright as they would be with a thumb pick. And he has a very bright tone. All right, I had a lot of fun showing y'all this. I hope y'all learned something from it. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.